It's the Score North Twin Show. We were opportunistic. We strung a little bit together, did a good job with that. Um, and then didn't, uh, oh, and, you know, we bring these bullpen guys in. I mean, Moran and uh, Belazovic and uh, Lopi and, you know, Jax goes out there going three in a row to, to save the game for us. And um, as a whole, uh, I mean, super impressive. The, the last couple innings offensively were just great. I mean, we're facing excellent relievers um, who are making pretty good pitches on us. Welcome in here to the Scorner Twin Show. We said, you know, Judd's Judd's got the sunscreen ready. He's got his camp. Look at the button-up training camp oh. shirt. No, today's press conference day. It's easy today. I'm just gonna go li- listen to. Well, but you clearly classing it up. You clearly have a well, button-up yeah, shirt. Well, yeah, because I'm gonna be out there. Cotton shirt underneath the polo, though. Is that Dude, a you're gonna be shirt? you're gonna be kind of hot? I feel like this? walking. Yeah. Around, yeah. No, no. The, you the, don't want the Zolgad <laughs> chest hair saying hi to Kevin O'Connell. First of all, it's only a press conference, so there's no outdoors, and it's supposed to be inside. Oh. So I'll be nice and comfortable, okay. and I do like okay. the cotton shirt. Okay, okay. so it's a sweat we, absorber. But we said let's try and we got we got to talk to the Twins fans, the Twins people out there because they're the hottest team in baseball. So we're going to try and just do like a 20 minute scorner Twin show here. We'll do more throughout the week. The Twins are blasting off right now, boys. They have won eight of their last ten games uh, of all the teams in baseball. That is the best. 10 game record. I believe they have the best record since the All Star break as well. And uh, you've got some bats that are heating up. So maybe this is a good time for Judd to apologize to Max Kepler. I don't know. Like it's it's up to you, Judd, oh. if you uh, want to finally acknowledge that Max Kepler is. Oh, and there it yeah. is. Oh, there's the magic number magic countdown. Number 50 countdown. 58, 58 games. games. Yes. I love this graphic. <laughs> 58 games. Congratulations. Oh, best graphics would... in the business. As I tweeted last night when you tried to get said apology before, first of all, I will take a bow because Sports Dad's tough love, again, works. And second of all, as I put, pointed out, Alex Kirilov has made a world of difference. Max Kepler heating up when Alex Kirilov, who, shockingly, who suggested that that guy should play every single day? Oh, yeah, it was this show. Um, and at the end of the day, too, here's the nice thing. Kepler's value is increasing. Do you think they have the stones to trade a hot Max Kepler? No. Like trade him at his peak? Or would they say, oh, thank God he's finally well, you hot. Know now we can ride this. You know what? You. you bring up a very interesting question because I do agree with Dex. No, I don't think that they have the intestinal fortitude to make said trade. But, you know, if you want to get something at the deadline, I think you could make an argument that if you take it off the roster, that's probably a more – palatable and actually more um, attractive thing for the team that might make a trade with you than trying to trade a slappy 12th prospect who's not who's in the midst of, of a poor year and then you also don't deplete the system yeah and I think Kepler's contract's a team option too it's not a player option so that it if is. he continues to play well that team can totally exercise into that option yeah. for another year of control I mean what the hell right Look at you guys. This is great. This is like but a great sales it. pitch here. We should record this and hey. send it to the the offices at uh, One Twins Way. I think we should let, let's mix in some feedback here and then we'll do an immaculate grid. We like to be inclusive here of uh, the audience interaction on the Scorner Twin Show. We are a show of the people here. The Scorner Twin Show. Oh, what's happened? So let's start with Ryan Schmoll. And by the way, if you guys could give the Scorner Twin Show, which is back after a two year hiatus, a five star rating and a positive review on Apple Podcasts, and click the subscribe button and the like button on the Scornoff YouTube channel. Help us grow this thing. And may I point out, too, that if you look at at it, forget the All-Star break, the relaunch, the rebirth of the Scornoff Twin Show, which, by the way, had many episodes during very good seasons, has coincided with the team getting red hot. I mean, maybe maybe we are the good luck charm. Maybe we are. Look at the banner. We are the ones. There it is. That's again, 58 games. Twins magic number, 58 games. <laughs> Ryan Schmoll chimes in. This is why general managers don't listen to fans and blow the team up after every single time things aren't going well. Judd would dismantle the team five times a year if he ran the Twins. <laughs> I would have fired Rocco. I'll tell you that right now. I, I would have fired Rocco. I'm no, I'm the one who said, look, there are players I, I would have traded, but for all these, we'll just trade Buxton, folks. He can't be traded. You, you know, Correa, no trade clauses. But yes, at 
At the deadline or at the All Star break, I would have fired Baldelli. Now I am convinced that there was some type of something happened here. Like things have changed, and I don't know if it was a thing with the players or it was with Rocco. And and in fairness to to Rocco, Rocco might have gone to his bosses and said, "You guys are crazy. What are you doing?" Like something has changed in in the, the fact that they now, at least in four of the games since the All Star break, Phil have stacked, and I love this, Julian Kirilov Kepler. And it's worked out well. They never did that before. So they definitely have made adjustments. And my biggest, I think my biggest gripe about this team from a structure standpoint and how it's run is there's a very much a stubbornness at times where it's like, you got to change this. And they're like, no, we don't. So I do give them credit for that. Yeah. And uh, and actually, this brings us to our next comment here from Mega77 Chavez. Here's the problem. It took two months for management to figure out Julian, Kirloff, and Lewis, when healthy, are not platoon players. Even casual fans could see that. And I get that, you know, you, in a perfect world, you. and by the way, look at Judd Frozen here on the Score on Twin Show. You can not still effect. hear him if we pop him off, right? We can. I yes, think we that's can not hear. flattering, okay. by the way. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> we can still hear Judd, so we're fine. So... I think this is the conundrum. It's that a lot of times when you're making the jump from the minor leagues to the major leagues, even if you were good against both righties and lefties as a hitter in the minor leagues, it might take some time to adjust to like-handed pitching, which is like Kirloff is going through some of that. So you're trying to figure out how much time do we give these guys to become complete hitters when we're trying to win a division, but you can't, you can't just not give those guys a chance. Like Kirloff for Kirloff to be a complete hitter, for his career, he has to face left-handed pitching, mm-hmm. and and the same is for Julian. So, and Royce Lewis, whenever he comes back in like two or three weeks. So, I mean, I would just keep running them out there. I would empower them. I think there's a human element here too, where you want those guys to know they're all like in their mid twenties. You guys are the future of this team. You are the core yeah. hitters. You guys are the on-base machines. So get out there, figure it out. You should have enough of a cushion here in your division, a bad division, where they can take some lumps. But you need those guys to be complete hitters, development-wise. Yeah, kind of. You want those guys to have as many chances, obviously, as you possibly can. And then it's like no coincidence at this point, and it's not a hot take. I told Judd this yesterday. Their best hitters right now are Alex Kirloff and Edward Julian. It's not yes. close. Like those are their two best hitters. And they're, I know Kirloff's not a rookie anymore, but he has finally graduated from the prospect list. He's graduated from a handful at bats over the last two years. Now he's playing every day, and he's your most important hitter. Delivers an incredibly clutch hit yesterday. And Julian, who wasn't necessarily a top 100 prospect and wasn't wasn't a, like a prospect that was well known like Kirloff or like a Buxton, et cetera, he has now stepped up. And it just it kind of reminds you, right? Of and we always like to do like hist- revisionist history. Kind of reminds you of the old 20, you know, 2002 club that came up with all these other guys that were all in homegrown players that basically helped save that team, st- stop them from being contracted. And you're giving all those kids the opportunities. You're not just handing out at bats to random dudes anymore. And you need that. You need your internal guys to obviously be uh, basically your best players, which they're going to be. Mm-hmm. Let's see if I'm back here. I think he's for now. Back. I'm back. For ha- I'm hashtag back. <laughs> and it's we'll been a see great, how it's been long... a great weekend of tech problems for Joe. Yeah, it's been a terrible. Through. Like I'm I'm in a, a Kepler like slump. I might be traded. I don't know what's going to happen. So the one thing that I think has become really intriguing about this whole whole thing is though is that this spurt of baseball, which which I also w- will say this, it's a definite different feeling. Uh, the lineup is now creating op- opportunities. It's not this. Oh, if we don't hit hit a home run, we're screwed. There's a resiliency about this team through the way that they're playing, and also I think the way that they're trying to construct themselves that we definitely didn't see in the 45 and 46 first half. This is creating a juicy discussion health provided, so I will say that as a caveat, a juicy discussion about the playoff roster and what you do. Because the more we see, if the Twins play like this, they're going to win the Central. Yeah. They're, 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 it's not, it, the division sucks, so they're going I'm to ready. win it. I might so, be ready to call it. Dude, they, I, they get two two more against Seattle. Why don't you split those if you, yeah. if you, if you sweep it even better. Kansas and then City. You get, dude, Kansas City's ownership group just sent, it was like a 1,000 word we're sorry for being terrible, but we also need your support for a new stadium. Yes, downtown Letter Kansas to the City. Fans. They're trying to get out. Kansas City out is out. apologizing for how bad they are, and you get them for three games this weekend. Like you, You're probably going to have a six- or seven-game lead at the trade deadline, and Cleveland's not trying to get Cleveland might sell pieces off. Bieber yep. just went on the 60-day DL. Like, it's... 
I'm not prepared to call it yet, but I will say if, if the Twins can beat the teams, and that's what they're do, doing now. I told Dex this on the show on uh, Monday, Phil. You know what my thing is? Don't embarrass yourself. Like, don't win the division a game under 500. Don't embarrass yourself. This is not embarrassing. Like, I'm fine with this. I'm fine with getting this. Getting swept in the first round would be getting would be well, embarrassing. Be embarrassing right, but I mean, didn't they lose three or four at home to Detroit at one point? So, like, they have lost to bad teams. Right now, they're doing a very good job against bad teams. I do not consider Seattle to be a bad team. I consider Seattle to be very much on a parallel with the Twins. But all of that being said... Again, here's the really easy decision that they're going to make difficult, though. Playoff roster and playoff lineup, okay? If the playoffs started today and Lewis was, and Royce, Lewis, and Polanco were back and Buxton was fine, I don't think Byron Buxton starts. Because I don't think in good conscience, mm. it, in a playoff game, which you know can be decided by the tiniest of mistakes— I don't think you can responsibly start Julian at second base if Polanco's there. And Royce Lewis deserves to play third. And Byron Buxton deserves to sit. I also think, as I freeze again, I give up. I also think, I will end with this. I'm just, look at that look on my face. Um, the last thing is this. I'll do it. Joey Gallo, Joey Gallo, in my opinion, and they won't do this, but they should, should not be on the playoff roster to start. Uh-uh. But isn't it kind of tempting off the bench? Hey, we need it. We need. I a got three Buxton run. to swing for the fences. Well, but but he's a, but one's a righty, one's a lefty. We yeah. need a three run tank right now, and we're desperate. Yeah, that it's that tempting, Joey Gallo gives you a. Chain. I got better players. I got better players than and one of those two. I think should be left off the playoff. Roster. I want both those guys on on the bench. Those are those are perfect options off the bench for a seventh inning bomb when you need one. Like they literally all they do, all their hits are home runs. Right, but I have better yeah. players. I don't need Nick Punto to slap a button See, down I the need, third baseline. I, want, I need someone to put the ball in the seats. I want to win the game before I need to hit a, a home run light. I keep one, one of those guys up, but the other one, I reward a young player who deserves it. Well, Walner, but, but so Walner would be that guy, but he needs to yeah. continue to produce here, right? Like if if Walner or now Larnick's back up for at least a minute. Because he he replaced Buxton on paternity, so you you've got a bunch of guys who could m- maybe fill that sort of left handed. We need a left handed bat to put a ball in the front row at Yankee Stadium or something, right? I love how we're already doing this on July twenty fifth. Yeah, the, the, like two two weeks ago, this show was ready to tear the whole thing down because they were <laughs> under five hundred. But this, I will say, this is exactly what they had to do coming out of the break. Yeah. Your and you're even, the easiest schedule in baseball. Go rip it in half, right? And even to to you know call the election, if you will, call the division. So of the four easiest schedules in baseball, it's the White Sox, Twins, Royals, and Tigers. But the Guardians are actually they have the tenth hardest schedule. They still have to play the Dodgers three times. They have to play the Blue Jays three times. They have to play the Astros three times. They have to play the Rays six times. So believe it or not, the Cleveland actually had most of their majority easy games already. They actually have a tougher path now I can't call it yet, to get though. there. I'm I not ready to call it. I can't call it yet. But I have judge. a foot in the water. No, I have judge. a foot in the I water. I can't call it. I can't call it yet. In fact, I think calling it would be irresponsible. To I call made it. Call I made this uh, magic oh, hey, number up, countdown graphic that we will use on every twin show. On so Valley I'm ready Sports there. North, okay. we root for the twins like you wouldn't believe and call the division <laughs> way too early. Uh, real, real quick here, uh, I just want to give you guys a little Edward Julian stat porn. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, the second base thing is definitely, hmm. it's a, it's kind of a problem. But that dude's bat needs to be in the lineup Hell every yes. single day of the rest of the season. Yep. So over the last 15 games, going back like a week before the All-Star break, he's batting 455 with a 547 on-base percentage, five home runs in the 15 games for a 1,400 OPS. He's also drawn nine walks to 13 strikeouts, which is great. You want to... Mm -hmm. trying to balance that out, right? Mm -hmm. For his career, so he has played professional baseball across now almost 200 major league plate appearances, over 1,000 minor league plate appearances, 500 collegiate uh, SEC, by the way. He played at Auburn, plate appearances. And then 212, we're going to call other like fall and summer league situations. The lowest on-base percentage he has produced at any level is 393. 
He is a freaking machine. And there's been, I think the optimism if you're a Twins fan is there's been examples of guys who you knew that they could get on base or hit for power. Corey Kosky, Justin Morneau, you know, corner infield type guys. And maybe that's where he transitions at some point. I don't know. But you can teach a guy how to field historically in this organization uh, better than he is right now. So, oh, but yeah. His look at like, dude, he, every level, this is not a fluke. Yes. What you're seeing is not like a Lou Ford weird, you know, two month hot stretch here. Could he cool off a little bit? Absolutely. But does he continually get on base at a ridiculous clip at every level of baseball for the last six years? Yes. And it's so you're, much fun to watch. You are now willing to play two guys in Julian and Kirilov on a regular basis who both in the future could win batting titles. Yeah. That's, that's what not, I want. It's not far-fetched. That, that's um, what I want. And there's some power here. there too, Phil. Noah Welch chimes in here via the... Score North YouTube channel. Ryan Jeffers is having a career season. He's mm-hmm. really proved to us he's a warrior defensively and can provide some clutch hits. Great overall catcher. I looked this up. So he is second among all catchers in on-base percentage this season. Just a sneaky, sneaky good on-base guy for the Twins this year. Throwing guys out, too. Uh, uh, caught stealing. His rate's pretty good there, too. He's just, uh, yeah, he's blossoming into a really solid catcher. And to be honest, most catchers in MLB outside of, like, the first top three ones if they can just get on base and or do they can provide a little bit of pop. And right now, Jeffers is actually developing into legitimately. If, I mean, if you took those numbers he's been hitting, put him out through 162 games, that's one of the best catchers in baseball, basically. Yeah. Uh, Cody J says, Declan must have watched Top Gun again. Yeah, I must have. Did. No, I had, a, I had a birthday party on Saturday. It was a cowboy-themed birthday party. Uh, one right. of my best friends, Clearly. she turned 30 years old, and uh, she did a cowboy western theme. So I wore actually I feel I ordered a Adam another Adam Page hangman shirt that said Cowboy Bleep on it. Yeah. It did not get here in time. So I had oh. to wear my my long sleeve anxious millennial cowboy shirt which still was fine cuz actually it was a little cooler yeah. here in the Twin Cities on Saturday. Uh but I did rock the mustache off board on Saturday and I'm still rocking it today. We'll see how much longer though. Uh I keep this. I don't know. Judd, will you uh will you wear a mustache to Vikings training camp at some point? Uh, that will not be uh, transpiring. I'm sure some will because the the stash is back. The stash, like, is, the back. stash is popular it's now back. after being out of Vogue for a long time. But I don't think the one time that I grew the stash fill back in when we did Movember, um, I looked like somebody who should probably be incarcerated. You, <laughs> yeah, you did. You look I, like I frightened of myself. I wouldn't have stood at a bus stop by myself if I saw myself. So no. You look out like those, pr- those printed out pieces of paper with someone's picture that they yeah, hang Chris on Hansen, telephone poles in your neighborhood. Chris Hansen wouldn't leave my kitchen <laughs> during that whole time. I'm like, Chris, why are you here? Hello, Dad, why are you here? To catch a predator. He'd always walk in, hi, I'm Chris Hansen from uh to catch from from NBC, Dateline NBC yep. to catch a predator. And the guy, the get like the guy would be wearing like a robe, carrying some uh, wine like coolers. spritzers, like wine coolers. It would coolers. start with the poor kid, though, right? Like the girl would, she'd o- open the door, and the guy would come in with his wine spritzers and pizza, <laughs> and she'd be like, "I, I gotta run upstairs for a second. And then out of the like broom closet comes Chris Hansen. Hello. It's like it wasn't. No, I no. I'm just here. I, I swear to God, it wasn't me. It's like uh, actually, we have a print out of the transcripts. Are you, uh, I like 15-year-olds uh, XOXO on AOL Instant Messenger? Is that you? Uh, yeah. I actually saw a TikTok over the weekend on why that show got canceled. I didn't realize Because he did something this. creepy, right? No, it wasn't. It was because oh. they they got a, uh, uh, like, an assistant district attorney turned out to be the guy that, that they nabbed. And while they were shooting the entire thing, the guy killed himself. Oh. It never aired, obviously. But like they're like, okay, we're done with this now. Oh, okay. okay. They're like they're making like, people, but but they're exposing people for being. I know, but I guess that's why they canceled the show, and they they like oh, didn't like cancel it with fanfare. They're just like, we're gonna put this one aside for a while. What dark? I know. But How do we now transition to immaculate okay. grid without being oh, awkward? I'm I off the screen, just, so it doesn't really. I mean, I'm. Just, You'll see it though. You'll be able to. No, see I know, it but this side. is a this, this is a tough day for the viewers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can't see uh, sports today. I guess we'll just awkwardly transition to the Immaculate Grid Challenge here, presented by our friends at Summit Orthopedics. Uh, So Summit Orthopedics, if you're dealing with any type of pain, just ankles, back, knees, whatever it is, no referrals are needed. They offer same-day appointments. If you're really hurting, they also offer walk-in orthopedic urgent care. 
seven days a week. Learn more at summitortho.com. That's summitortho.com. And Dex, a shout out to uh, the 3M Open this week, man. You got some Justin Thomas is looking to yeah, get man. into the FedEx Cup. All sorts of big names that you may have seen uh, at the Open over the weekend are here in Minnesota this week. Yeah, I was actually at, at that birthday party. I was in Blaine on Saturday, and you had to have all the signs up. They're welcoming all the golfers. They're welcoming all the fans. Of course, Tony Finau is going to be in town to defend that title. You can go to 3mopen.com slash tickets. Uh, nice little story that Judd pointed out. They're kind of turning a whole 18 to like a waste management open situation. So it's actually going to be pretty it. cool. So go park yourself there and go to 3mopen.com slash tickets. All right. We got uh, a, a, a tic-tac-toe square of baseball here. Uh, for the YouTube audience, you can see it. For the audience, we are looking for, and five minutes on the clock, a guardian who was a Blue Jay, mm. a guardian who was a Brewer, and a guardian with a 100 RBI season. We're looking for a Philly who was a Blue Jay, a Philly who was a Brewer, and a Philly who with a 100 RBI season. And then we're looking for a Blue Jay with a 200 hit season, a Brewer with a 200 hit season, and someone with a 200 hit season that also had 100 RBIs. Five minutes on the clock right now because Judd's got to go to training camp. Here we go. You got to go nine for nine. Where do you want to start? Uh, I mean, CC Car- Sabathia is a guardian brewer. We could. Dude, Dex, I had a I had a a sixteen rarity score a couple days Whoa! ago oh, when you man. had oh, twin, that... Twins, Cubs, and White Sox were all on the same grid, yeah. and it was. Oh game yeah, over. I saw that one. Game over. Okay. Uh, guardian, who Blue Jay, Guardian. Jay? Joe Carter. R- Roberto Alomar. I Joe think, Carter. Sure. I think Joe Carter's going to be Joe more Carter. rare, right? He played for the Indians back in what, the 90s? Yeah, from the Cubs. He he was in the... Um, and are we good on okay. this? Yep, yep, yep. Good. Okay. All right. He was in the um, Rick, uh, Rick Sutcliffe trade. Philly, who was a Blue Jay, Scott Rowland. Scott Rowland's a good one. Just went in the Wait, Hall of Fame. Rowland went... Was, what, mm-hmm. was he with the Phillies? He for the Blue Jays for a minute. But did he play with the Phillies? Yeah, he played with the Phillies, right? That's what he was known for. Yeah. Yeah, Phillies, uh, Cardinals. Just got it wrong. Okay. Yeah, four percent. Nice. Oh wow, that's surprisingly oh, time, low. Dude. That's nice. Surprisingly Phillies, low. Brewers, Phillies was a Brewer, man. There's a uh, Gene Segura. Jeff oh, Jenkins. Did Jeff Jenkins play for the Phillies for a minute? Didn't we use Jeff Jenkins for something else too? A couple weeks ago, was Jeff Probably. Jenkins a Diamondback too? Let's let's knock out the easy ones here. By the way, we got three and a half minutes left Gene here. Let's Segu- knock- Gene Segura is right, right? Yeah, Gene Segura. Yep, Gene okay. uh, J E A N. Yep, there he is. Segura. There you go. That's good. Thirty. Oh wow! Okay. But yeah, that's okay. He's Surprisingly a high He's there. He's a current player. That's why. Uh, Philly with hundred RBI season. Um, um, so many. Ryan Utley, Howard. Let's go Howard. back. Let's, let's let's show off here. How far back can we go? Cruck. Did Cruck get hundred RBI? That I, that I don't know. Probably, but that's a risk. Tommy. Yeah. So does, not, not does for it, the Phillies. That's what I was going to say. It has to be with the Phillies, right? Yeah. yeah. He definitely drove it on, didn't he? He went Tony? to the Phillies for Dude, three years. Dude, he was years. a DH. He was like a first base DH. I, I mean, Wait, really? did Tommy go from... The, to, he, he played first base for the... Cleveland to... Was that Philadelphia? Yeah. And then, yeah, because he, he was in mm-hmm. the prime of his career. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that because he may have been injured. So you guys... Okay. Really? You're on okay. your own with Jim Tomey. I'm also gun shy from the Bob Feller. Yeah, you game. are. Yeah. I mean, Ryan Howard's our safest bet, or Chase Utley. I don't even actually. Okay, I don't know then, just go, then just go. Howard. Then just let's just go Ryan Howard. Howard. Just, let's that's just fine. let's yeah, just that's fine. get we the nine go. for nine. We gotta go. Okay. Uh, do we have a uh, forty-one? Very high. Okay. Uh, Two hundred RBI minutes. for Guardian. Ma- so Manny many. Ramirez. Oops, yeah, so there's many. a ton. Jim Tomey probably. Tomey would also work. Yeah. We might, but we might need to use one of these for the. Oh, no, oh, we yeah, don't, because we're, we're good. Well, no, we're good. Okay, all right. Yeah. Manny? Yeah, sure. let's do Manny. I mean, he definitely had him. 14%. That's, wow, that's all right. surprisingly A 200-hit Blue Jay. Molitor. Right? Paul Molitor, yeah. Or, yeah, you're probably right there. Yep. Okay, a Brewer? A 200-hit Brewer. I mean, uh, Robin Yount? Yep. Judd? Yep. Yount? Oh, yeah. Robin Yount. Back in the day? 39. Wow, look at this. Man. We got two minutes left right. for this for, for the easiest one. Let's, okay. let's think of a... Possibly obscure one. Here. Oh boy! So, so we get... need two two hundred hits and a hundred a two hundred hit season and a hundred RBI season. You know, uh, you know, I don't think he got it. I was gonna say maybe Dozier, but I don't Dude, know the, if he got the... two hundred. Dozier in like twenty sixteen when he had like oh, fifty oh, bombs oh, oh, and oh, oh, was the leadoff yeah. hitter. And it can be different seasons, right? It can be so. It's yeah. just someone in their career that had. It doesn't have to be the same season, right? 
or does it? Uh, I think it does. I I think this would have to be the same. Two hundred hits and hundred RBI in the same. I believe yeah, this has also, to be the, the further season. back you go, the further back you go, more the more hits. obscure. So if we if we said like Ty Cobb, I, although he may have not had hundred RBIs because he was more of a yeah, leader, I wouldn't. Right? And and Kirk, that was the dead ball Kirby? time too. You if you use Kirby again, maybe right. Well, that's the thing. I know Kirby yeah. has had both of these, but if did they happen in the same season? Probably, right? Let's do it. Kirby? Kirby Puckett? Kirby. You guys are good, good on Kirby Puckett. Kirby! Kirby Puckett, don't smoke it! Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Bang. We okay, are we're, at immaculate. least we're back. At least we're oh, back. 0. 0.8 for Kirby. Yeah. Oh, my 0. God. We went, with a, we went with a lot of known go. guys here. but This is surprising. Wow, like, dude. Oh, the Brewers have only had four 200-hit season hitters? Wow. Seriously? Click on that. Click what? what? Braun. Molitor. Cecil Cooper. And, and uh, Cecil Cooper. Damn, I love Cecil and Cooper. And Robin Young. Wow. Love me dude. some Cecil Cooper. Hey, guys. We are immaculate today. All right. Beautiful work. We're going to send Judd off to Vikings training camp. Purple Daily is going to be loaded. I'm guessing we're going to have uh, multiple done. more Scorner Twin shows here in the next few days. We appreciate you guys. We just want the Twins to win a playoff game. That's our motto on this show. We're pumped that this show is back. We appreciate you guys supporting us. And we will see you next time on the Scorner Twin show.